Welcome to my channel. My name is Nolan and today I'm going to be talking about a brushless Tractus Summit versus a brush Tractus Summit. Now I want to touch on this topic because I know a lot of people they get Tractus Summits and the stock power is pretty underwhelming so they think to themselves well why don't I just upgrade it and throw in a brushless system. So there's definitely some stuff you should know because uh, there's been a lot of trial and error with this machine right here. A lot of stuff that I've learned and a lot of stuff I've had to upgrade. Uh, along the way while bashing this machine. Also, there's some stuff to know with a brush one. So whether you want to go brushless or not, or if you just stumbled on this video, you could definitely learn some stuff from this video in my experience. So starting with my brushless converted one, this one obviously started off brushed because they only sold them brushed. But uh, I swapped in the system out of the E-Revo 2.0. So it is a Valenian 2200 kV motor combined with the VXL 6S ESC. Now talk about this one real quick. This one is still running. This one is still running the bone stock power system. So that would be the brushed EVX2 ESC, which is 16.8 volt or four cell capable, combined with the 775 Titan brushed motor. Uh, still believe I'm running stock gearing on this one. As you can see, the wheels and tires are not stock on this one. This one's actually running some huge RC four wheel drive tires. So they're the, what are they? They're the Mickey Thompson Baja MTZ 40 series tires mounted up on axial beadlock wheels. As you can tell, quite a bit larger than these tires and quite a bit heavier. Uh, these ones are much closer to stock size, but they are also not stock. They are the Proline Rock Rage tires. This one, everything in the diffs is stock. Uh, all the drive shafts are the stock plastic ones. The only upgrades are really these huge tires and the beadlock wheels. I do have some aftermarket steering servos and a Traxxas chassis brace. Otherwise stock machine. This one, quite a bit different. Besides just the power system, I'll kind of take you down memory lane. After swapping in the power system, everything else was stock. So I was still running stock diffs front and rear, still running the stock drive shafts, stock everything. Uh, pretty quick, I think on the very first bash, we tore up the spur gear. So I upgraded the spur gear to a hardened steel one. So the gearing's also changed on this. So I geared it up a little bit. I geared it up to a 17 tooth pinion gear. And then after I stripped the stock spur gear, I went to a 62 tooth spur gear, I believe is why I'm running. And like I said, it's hardened steel. But then after I upgraded the hardened steel spur gear, the next weakest point is a drive shaft. So every single bash, and this is just bashing on 4S. This is a 6S capable system. On 4S, I started breaking drive shafts. So I think I went through three bashes, breaking the stock drive shafts. They break right where the pin goes in. So there's a pin up top. You might be able to see it up here. There's a pin up top on these stock drive shafts and it goes into plastic. So anything where there's a metal joint or anything going into plastic, it's bound to break. And that's the experience I had. The, the instant torque with this brushless power, I was breaking the stock drive shafts left and right, which aren't very difficult to replace, but it was happening pretty easily. I probably could have uh, loosened my spur gear up a, a bit more. I have it uh, loosened to about half a turn to three quarters of a turn out. You could loosen it more, but then the issue you have is your slipper is going to be slipping all the time and you're just going to wear your slipper clutch out and then you're going to be replacing that. So either way, there's going to be a wear item. There's going to be something that's going to give. So either your slipper clutch is wearing out fast or your brake and drive shafts. Something's going to give once you go brushless power. Uh, so after a few times of breaking the drive shafts, I decided to go with hardened steel drive shafts. I went with some cheap eBay ones first, which lasted for a little while. Then I went to some hot racing ones, which held up pretty well. But more recently, I've been having issues. I've been sending this thing higher and higher, and on big impacts, I'll find myself breaking these stub axles. So these dry shafts break right at the stub axle, which is surprising. Um, it's very frustrating too, because when you pay, I think over $100 for just the four outer dry shafts, they're breaking right at the stub axle. But I do think it's a necessary upgrade. If you go to Brussels Power, even running 4S, you're going to end up breaking dry shafts, the stock ones. Um, now, there are some brands I've never tried. I've never tried the MIP dry shafts. People have told me those are basically indestructible. So maybe I'll have to try those, but I'd have to bite the bullet because those are very, very expensive drive shafts. Um, I think there's also one from a brand called LEM or something like that. I'll have to check them out. But... Currently, I'm mismatched because I've broken so many of the eBay ones. I've broken the hot racing ones. I'm actually currently running a stock plastic one on the back here. This is a cheap eBay one. And I think the two front ones are still the hot racing ones. So it's just 
I've just been breaking them left and right. And that's just most of the time just running 4S, guys. Not success. Not success. I very rarely run this machine on success lipo. And when I do, it breaks almost immediately. Like, I kid you not, this thing. And that's just like my, just the first issue. So then when you go upgrade the drive shafts, if the drive shaft don't give, next thing to give is your diffs. The diffs are extremely weak on the summit. Like, really weak. Um, I haven't had any issue on my brush summit. Um running stock power but when you go put brushless power in you're going to strip the uh diffs which i did i think i stripped both of them twice the front and the back i replaced them once with the stock diffs again and then i decided no i'm not doing this anymore so i replaced them with hot racing spiral cut hardened steel diffs and those have held up but then the next thing to go was the actual spider gears within the diff cup so I went into diff cup, replaced the spider gears with some hardened steel ones from uh, GPM. Uh, then I was still stripping them. So even with hardened steel spider gears, I was stripping out them in the diff cup. I couldn't figure out why. I determined that the actual plastic diff cup was expanding and it was allowing those, those spider gears to move apart a little bit and they were actually tearing themselves up. So what I ended up doing was I actually replaced the stock plastic uh, diff cups with aluminum diff cups and ever since I replaced the, the uh, stock diff cups with aluminum ones I haven't had any issues but those are big expenses so it's 50 bucks alone just for one ring and pinion so that's a hundred bucks for that we're talking probably another 20 bucks per diff cup so another forty dollars 140 probably another 15 or 20 for the spider gears so right there we're talking like 170 bucks just in the diffs in the differentials alone, that does not include the drive shafts, which the Hot Racing ones cost me about 100 I still have the center diff uh, from Hot Racing. That's held up. It's just these outer ones that take the impacts are the issue. Um, another issue, I was breaking uh, the suspension arms quite often on big impacts. They're pretty weak, so I upgraded to some uh, RPM suspension arms. No issues on big impacts because these are pretty darn flexible. Um, I also upgraded the steering carriers to uh, aluminum because I was breaking those as well. So when you start jumping higher, those fragile plastic pieces, you know, they can't handle bigger impacts. So far, really haven't had too many issues with this one. This one's still running the stock suspension arms. It's still running the stock plastic steering carriers or hub carriers and really no issues. But this one only tops out around what I think I did a speed test, like 22 mile an hour, somewhere in there with these huge tires, 22. This one with this power system and this gearing goes like 51 or 53. Uh, and actually, you can go faster than that because I wasn't even full throttle. I just could not control it anymore because these tires saucered up so much. So this thing is maybe even a 60 mile per hour capable machine compared to 22. So when you're jumping bigger because of more power and then you land, you're going to start breaking stuff and the stock components cannot hold up to it. Nothing. The diffs, the suspension arms. I didn't even mention the push rods. So the other issue I started having was the push rods, which are actually steel but the ends are plastic stock. So as you can see on this, these are actually steel uh, push rod links, but the ends are plastic. And the issue is on big impacts, they'd actually pull out. So I was having them pull out from the stock ends. So I just upgraded to all aluminum links on all my camber links, my push rod links, and really no issue after that. But that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money to invest in a summit. And guess what? I still, don't feel confident in this machine so I still feel like I could take this out on 4s and it could still break because even with as beefed up as every component is in this drivetrain it still just can't handle the brushless power this I don't have to worry nearly as much even with these big tires I have had a breakage of the diff cup so the stock plastic diff cup the issue is I use this one for crawling a lot so you're you're running with your locker so one of the cool th uh, features of the summit is it has locking diffs this one still retains the locking diffs but when you lock the diff up the mechanism which they call t-lock i believe is what it's called it actually locks a piece uh into the bottom of the diff cup so when it locks in that's the only thing holding the two sides together that's the only thing connecting the two drive lines is the actual diff cup which is made out of plastic and if you you know that shock is gonna go right to the diff cup. And if it's a plastic diff cup, you could see how it could break the diff cup. And that's happened one or two times on this machine, I've broken the diff cup. It literally has broken the whole bottom of the diff cup, all the fluid leaked out. Um, but I have never stripped a stock differential pinion or ring gear on this 
um, running the brush power system. So basically, the Stock Summit can hold up to 4S brush power. It cannot hold up to 4S brushless power. 6S, in my opinion, is out of the question. Every single time I've run this on 6S, it's been broken in like less than five minutes. It's been pretty disappointing. Whether or not you want to go brushless or not, it's fun when it works. Like this thing is so much fun because it's fast when it's working, but it's down most of the time. It depends on would you rather have something that's fast and fun when it works, but it's not working most of the time? Or would you rather have something that's slow, but just fast enough to have fun that's working you know, 90, 90 plus percent of the time? Very rarely do I have an issue with this one. I do occasionally break a dry shaft, um, but I am running big tires. So with diff lock, if one of these catches, you can see how that could actually break a drive shaft. But um, really, a Summit is only good for brush power. Even with upgrades, it's really not good for brushless power. Uh, that's just my experience. My experience is no matter what I've done with this machine, it can't hold up to brushless power. It just can't. So that might not have been what some of you wanted to hear. Some of you might want to hear, what can I do to make my Summit? You know, the Ultimate Basher, there's nothing you can do to make a Summit the Ultimate Basher. I've thrown almost every single upgrade part at this, and I still don't feel confident I'll make it through a bash. So even if I upgrade the drive shafts, like I said, there's some drive shafts I haven't tried. I haven't tried the MIP ones. I've kind of been, I don't really want to because they're so expensive. And my fear is what if they do still break? Um, I know they make really good stuff. I've used their drive shafts on other machines like my Slash 4x4, but they're just so expensive. And I've already invested so much money in this machine. It's like, do I really want to invest even more money in drive shafts? So I've kind of been... Uh, considering it, but I really don't want to bite the bullet and spend all that money. I know there's another brand somebody in the comments told me about in a video. I think it's called LEM. LEM or something like that. Might check out their drive shafts, but you know, a hundred bucks for drive shafts is already pretty expensive. So I, a lot of these are pretty expensive stuff. So if you want to convert your summit over to Brussels, you better be very gentle with it. Like really gentle. If you're doing any type of hard launches, uh, jumping, um, even with the diffs open, there's a high probability you're going to break stuff. So if you guys did enjoy this video, go ahead, hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe. I'm going to be doing a video in the future showcasing these things in you know real life. Kind of bashing, jumping, what you can expect, side-by-side uh, -side comparison. So definitely subscribe and hit that bell if you want to see that video because that's something I want to do. You know, going over some similar jumps, uh, just launches, what you can expect between a stock uh, brush system with stock gearing and a slightly geared up brushless system. But uh, if you haven't checked out my channel, I highly recommend you check out my Traxxas Summit playlist because I used to travel uh, over the last couple of years. I traveled all over the country with my job, my previous job, and I took both my summits to some pretty awesome places. So you're going to want to check out my, uh, my videos. Um, I've taken this one. with I've put paddle tires on this one. I've taken it to Michigan to the sand dunes. I've taken it to California to the sand dunes. Heck, I think I took it to Texas to the Gulf Coast in the sand. I've ridden, driven this one all over the place in the sand, bashing it. Bashed it a lot of places. Taking this one rock crawling uh, in Washington State, Montana. I've taken it to Utah. Uh, taken it all over the country. I've taken it to Michigan. Taken a lot of my RCs have gone to pretty cool places. So definitely check out my channel. Make sure to subscribe and uh, stay tuned for future videos. Later.